Hi, hello, and howdy, and welcome to Of Goths and Goblins, the show where we talk about monsters both real and imaginary. I'm the knocking coming from your mirror at 4.38 a.m., Delaney. Emma, please make a goblin noise. Thank you, Emma. So, what are we going to be talking about today? Um, Today, we are going to be talking about a German immigrant by the name of William Konecki. He is a serial killer um, that came to the U.S., and he has killed three people confirmed. There's not a lot of... There's a few people that have gone missing around him, but they're not sure if he, they, he killed them or if they just disappeared. So he's barely a serial he's killer? He's barely a serial killer. He's on. only killed three. Come on. William. <laughs> William. Yeah, come on, man. You got to do better than that. Yeah, step it up, man. Um, So his nickname, as all serial killers have nicknames. Is, they got to be special. They got to be special, yeah. is the hum- His nickname is the human monster. Yes, he's a monster, I guess. A monster of human proportions. You couldn't hear that eye roll. <laughs> So, William Konecki was born in Germany around 1850. So, this is a while back. He's obviously dead now, but, like, this is an older uh, older story than... It's old, okay? It's... <laughs> I don't trust me. It's old. old. It's, it's old. From 1850. He was born in 1850. Okay. okay. At least 10 years ago. At least. At least. Not much is known about him before he came to America. But it is known that he came to America in 1884, and he moved to Mountain Home, Idaho, middle of nowhere, basically, like nowhere. There were sheep farmers, and that's about it. 1896, he married Regina Kopp, with the K, Kopp. No, 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 no. <laughs> Okay, so those two, like, made a little farm, made a little business, and they were, like, sheep herders, sheep farmers. Um, And they were quiet people. No one really knew much about them. They were just quiet, except for one thing. William's sheep group would just, like, get 20 extra sheep in one night. Like, they weren't weren't even baby sheep. Okay, I may not be a farmer. (laughs) But I know that's not how she's work. <laughs> no, no. So everyone was pretty sure that he was, like, stealing other farmers' sheep. Um, but that's not the only thing that people found unusual. Is he would hire farmhands, and then two months later, they would disappear. Like, no one saw them leave. No one really saw them do anything. They were on that farm, and then they were gone. Well, I wonder where they're going. I wonder where they went. But, you know, it was 1890. So. Really quick. Yeah. Is he feeding them to the sheep? No. Damn. No, they're not. No, feeding to okay. the sheep. That's, that's end of questions. Okay. Continue. <laughs> so um, his first confirmed murder, we're just going to say he's had three confirmed murders, but it's unlikely he's killed more people. Most likely, he just threatened them and they ran away. But his first confirmed murder was Regina, his wife's nephew. So his own nephew, technically. That's whack dog. Yes. Um, he, the nephew, was only known by his last name. A lot of people are only known by their last name here. And his last name, his surname, was Koninger. 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 Hello, chap. My name's He's Henry. German. Not British. Das is good. My name is Das is good. Das is good. Zen. The Herr der Ringi. Okay, we're just going to stop that now. <laughs> no. Um. So in 1895, Koninger came to America and William hired him as a farmhand to help with all the sheep that he had. That's sheep and... No. <laughs> okay. A few workers. He had a few workers at this time. Some had already gone missing, but everyone was like, hmm. People disappear all the time. Don't worry is, about it. This is 1858. 90. 90. 1890. This is ye olden days. <laughs> ye olden days. No one has to worry this about is these ye olden people. days. We don't have cameras. Coninger disappeared like other people had. Okay, kind of sus, not going to lie. A little suspicious. 
And William just said, oh, no, he went back home to Germany. Don't worry about him. He was he was homesick or whatever. And so, you know, Regina didn't do anything. I'm just going to say that right now. She was not worried about this. What? A cab. All cops are bitches. <laughs> no. Okay. A-K-A-B. A-K-A-B, yeah. But William said the man returned to Germany. The people around him were a little suspicious, so they contacted the German consulate in Oregon for some reason. Okay. What is a consulate? That's it's like people who like have connections to America and Germany. They're kinda like the go between between the countries. I for get people it now. moving back and forth. It's like a consultant? Yeah, kind of. Okay. Kind okay. of, yeah. Okay. Um, but they the consulate investigated what happened, and Koninger's parents had not heard from him for a long time. They said they got a note, a letter from him saying William owed him $800, and that's the last they heard of him. Okay? So, you know, William owes Koninger money, and then he disappears. A little suspicious, if you ask me. That's suspicious. That's suspicious. That's weird. It is weird. So after this, and the consulate, like after the consulate started getting involved, William somewhat left the area. He just kind of picked up and left. He didn't like sell his sheep. He didn't go to the bank to draw money out or anything. He just left. Um, And the county was pretty sure that Koninger died or was killed by William, so they offered a reward of $1,000 for information about him. People said he was last seen by Rocky Bar. It's like a little terrain. It's like... It's a it's, rocky it's bar. Rocky. It's rocky. It's a rocky area, basically. Yeah. yeah. It's like a sandbar of rocks. No, not a sandbar. Well, you know what I mean. The, the word bar was in there, and I know he ain't getting crunk no, in the he's middle not. of the field. Um... But they're pretty sure he went to Trinity Mountain. It's another little area that he had some land in. And everyone thinks that he burned Koninger's body. And he burned all the evidence there. Because um, they did actually find a little shack there that was burned down on his land. So everyone's pretty sure William killed his nephew. And yeah, that was his first kill. His first confirmed kill. Because, you know, there were all those other farmhands that went missing. Okay, so wait. In the beginning, you said that it wasn't likely that the people who disappeared were murdered by him. It isn't, but it's suspicious. Like... So they just... I know, I'm going back on my word. No, but they just disappeared. He's murdered at least three people. These people disappear and are never seen again. And we're like, no. No, it there's couldn't. no way this man murdered these other people. <laughs> well, there's not really. They just disappeared. I like, mean, I get it. People did that. People do that. People just disappear, but especially from the middle of nowhere. Exactly, but like also, <laughs> I think that's you know, a really fun, uh, <laughs> correlation does not equal causation. I took one psychology class. And okay. I know this. All right. Correlation does not equal causation. I understand that, but <laughs> throwing it out there. Definitely murdered these he four definitely bands. Definitely did something to them. Oh yeah, he fed them to the sheep. No, yeah. no. You have no proof. You don't either. Well, I don't have proof against me. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, his argument is stupid. So, in 1900, William struck again. The body of another sheep farmer showed up. This man, his name was Litzman. And his body was found between William and his own land. Like, it was on a trail between the two. Mm -hmm. And it was a known fact around the town that Litzman would carry a lot of money on his person when he was just walking around. Big flags, bro. Yeah, it was a little weird that he would do that. Yeah. And, you know, kind of stupid on his part. Yeah. But he did it, okay? I mean, if he got... He's some fancy schmancy sheep farmer, Okay. Oh, Lord, I'm a sheep farmer. I've got so much money here in the middle of nowhere. He's got all the money. Let me just traipse around with my pockets jingling with my gold. But his body, when his body was found on the trail, there was not a single coin on him. 
So whoever killed him, the money was gone. Oh, yeah. So William left town when the body was found. He like, poof, gone again. The only reason why people knew he went missing again is because he actually had an appointed court time because he was um, going against the law. He was like herding sheep that were diseased. Like, if you have a diseased sheep, you can't have it in your herd because it'll spread to everything else. My dad always says, Emma, never commit two crimes at once. (laughs) Well, he did. Yeah, that's how you get caught. But he left after that. And Regina was still in town. She was still with him, obviously. But she was still in town. But she was only there to, like, wrap up the business, the farm. She was getting rid of the sheep and all that. But she did something very suspicious. She drew money from her nephew's bank account. Ooh. Koninger. Ooh. His money is gone. She took it from the him. scandal. The scandal. I don't know why he still had money when he's dead. Why didn't his family take it? Well, but I like, guess it might be like the, like it's his family's account. And since she is his family, she has access to his it. His family's in Germany. No, but... Banks work weird. I feel like they would just take the money. They're like, mm, you're dead. I know. I mean, yeah, 100%. It might also, how long ago was it? 19. No, no, no. I mean, like, was how long ago in this time span was he murdered? How long has he been dead? Um, Five-ish years. Okay, I was about to say, because maybe it's not enough time for that to be processed. No, five years is no, enough five time five years to be is enough. Yeah, I don't know. That is weird. Oh, banks are whack, man. I don't understand them. Yeah. But um, Regina drew out the money, and then she also left. So Litzman was dead. Mm-hmm. Both of the Konecki's were gone. They'd left town, um, and Litzman's body had poison in it. And it's believed that William, no, he didn't, like, stab him. He didn't shoot him. He poisoned him. And he was found in the middle of a field? Yeah. How did we get from point A to point B? I'm not sure, man. They didn't really keep a lot of stuff on well, this. Well, okay. I, I can figure. I have a plot. They had coffee in the morning. Yeah. He dumped a little. Littman goes over to the Kinnekeeks. 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 The Kinnekeeks. The Kinnekeeks house. Have a lovely time. Talk German. Bopity boo. You've gobbled your last coup. Come in a Cuomo. And he poisons his coffee, and on his lovely walk back to his farm, bam, falls over dead. That's it. And then, the, and then the other guy comes over. Can 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 call him William. William, Willie, my boy, walks over and is like, "Hey, thanks. I'll take that." <laughs> Steals the coin purse, goes home. I mean, yeah. Well, it, wait, isn't it's he supposed possible. to be out of town? Does that throw my whole theory out the window? <laughs> No, he leaves, like, after the body's found. Okay. So, like, he has this court meeting. He leaves. But he's still around the time Litzman's body is found. Okay. So, like, he's he's all sneaky. He's sneaky, sneaky. So, yeah, your theory could be true. Okay. Um, It's probably not true, though. I've solved it. Nope, You've solved the, the case. The case has been solved. Yeah, There's no need called, anymore. Somebody called the FBI. I've solved the case. Of an old ass murder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Put him behind bars, Governor. He's dead. <laughs> Shut up. We can still dig him up. <laughs> no. You actually. No, you actually can't. Why not? You'll see. Oh, no. You'll see soon enough. Soon, you, I don't know. Is there any? <laughs> I don't like this foreshadowing. You'll, you will see soon enough why you can't dig up his body. Did you feed him to the sheep? You will see. <laughs> um. So William killed Litzman, and then him and his wife left, and mm-hmm. they picked up their life, and they ran to South Dakota. Oh, yeah. Yes, they went to South Dakota, the middle of nowhere in South Dakota. Grow That's South Dakota. everywhere in South Dakota. Basically. Everywhere except Sioux Falls. Yes. <laughs> Even then. Exactly. <laughs> they were in Cottonwood Creek, South Dakota. That's kind of like... The middle area. Okay. okay. So over by Pier? Over by Pier, yeah. Okay. Um, and, you know, they were living their best life. They were sheep farmers again. They're just chilling. Gotta get that good Watching the sheep, shearing them, all that stuff. But William got in trouble again with the law. He was convicted of stealing 300 sheep from one of his uh, farmers, one of the farmers beside him. 
Damn it, William. Like, he stole 300 sheep and didn't think he wouldn't get caught. Like, William, we've talked about this. <laughs> you can't just go stealing any 300 sheep. Not 300 of like them. Like, two sheep, maybe. Two sheep? Okay, you could get away with that. Ten sheep? You're pushing it. 300? <laughs> For starters, who has that many sheep? <laughs> sheep farmers. Well, yeah, like, But, like, was that all of his sheep? Or was that... I don't, it was probably, like, half. I don't understand sheep or numbers. Well, you know, sometimes people have, like, one pasture that everyone's sheep goes in. Mm, maybe. So maybe he Maybe just, it wasn't like, one guy's sheep. Maybe it was a bunch of people's sheep. Either way, that's a lot of sheep. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he got caught and he went to jail for a month. He also paid had to pay, like, $1,000 um, for stealing these sheep. Well, tiny consequences are so <laughs> weird. You stole 300 sheep. Go jail. Month. Month. Month in jail. Month. Your wife can visit you every day, but yeah. mm, you're chilling in here. Yeah. You just gotta hang out for a yeah. month. It's cool. Don't do that again. But his farm hands would still occasionally disappear. Disappear. Okay. Yeah. Big quotes there. One of these men had a brother from Iowa, and his brother actually came up north to South Dakota to figure out where's my brother, huh? Where'd he go? I haven't seen him. William's just like, no, no, he quit. I don't know where he went. He's gone now. We're gonna call the man Roar Becker. That's his last name. Okay. We don't know his first name. Stevens. Uh, No. Stevens. So Roar Becker came and looked for his brother. His brother was nowhere to be found. And William's like, hey, you want a job? And Roar Becker's like, oh, yeah, I'd love to work for you. You, my brother went missing under your watch, but you know, whatever. Yeah, I'll come work for you Ugh. as a farmhand. You're so stupid and I love it. <laughs> yeah. But while Rohrbecker was there, he met a man by the name of Andrew Demler. You say that like I'm supposed to know who that is. And Andrew I feel... Demler, his last victim. Okay. That's what the emphasis <laughs> was. I was like, am I supposed to I know was, who that is? I was leading up to it. I'm sorry. <laughs> here, here, wait. You can try again. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Andrew Demler. Wow, who's that? Wow. Um, no, um, no, this isn't happening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He, so Rohrbecker met a man by the name of Andrew Demler, which is William's last victim. So Rohrbecker quickly learned that Demler would, n- would not go anywhere without his little sheepdog and his sheepskin coat. He absolutely loved this coat. I swear to God, if something happens to this nothing dog. Nothing happens to the dog. Okay. Spoilers, nothing happens to the dog. Okay. But a few weeks into Roar Becker's job, Demler went missing. Surprise, surprise, the farmhand goes missing. Wow. Again. What a twist. Um, so uh, William's like out of a farmhand. He needs someone to step up and take Demler's spot. And who better than Rohrbecker? Rohrbecker's like, oh, yeah, promotion. I'll take it. And him and William, they'd be best buds. Not really. They were just employer and they employee. They were just guys. They were working together. And one day they went out to a field and they found Demler's dog. Uh, the dog was alive. Okay. It's I was like, only, Emma, you told me. It's only been a couple of days. Um, but they found Demler's dog. And it was sniffing a pool of frozen blood. Okay, and Rohrbecker's like, hey, what happened? What's Why is all this blood out here? And William's like, no, no, no. I killed a sheep out here, you know. I It was sick. I killed it. There's nothing suspicious going on. And Rohrbecker's like, where's Demler? Why is his dog here? He wouldn't go anywhere without that dog. And so he goes and investigates Andrew, Andrews, Andrew Dremler's his little house and he finds that sheep skin coat that he wouldn't go anywhere without and so Rohrbecker goes to William and says hey what happened something happened to him and William's like nothing happened to him nothing happened to him that's all he said and Rohrbecker's like okay I quit I'm gonna leave nothing happened to him but you know I'm going to move on Rohrbecker tried to move on, but William would not let him quit. He said, you can't do this to me. You'd put me out of farmhand. You need to wait until I find someone new. Guess that girl keep gay boss. Yes. Rohrbecker's kind of in a tight spot 
But one night he sees William and William's asleep and Rebecca's like, hmm, I can just sneak away right now. So he runs out into the night and he escapes and he goes back to Iowa and he tells a man by the name of Fenny. Fenny's a sheriff. A sheriff. He tells Fenny what happened. And Fenny's like, huh, I know this man. I know this name. Because he's been in trouble with the law before. Oh. People kind of know about this thieving sheep farmer, okay? <laughs> that damn dirty sheep farmer. That dang sheep farmer. He do, don't steal my keeps sheep. stealing people's sheep. What a fool. So Feeney goes up to South Dakota and he starts investigating what happened. And William, he, Feeney questions William. And William's like, who are you? Nothing happened. Demler must have went. He literally said Demler went to New York to find a better job. But Feeney's like, no, I, Roar Becker told me what, what actually happened. He said that you're suspicious and everything you've done. So Feeney keeps questioning him. And he's there for a little while, a little while, a couple of days, a week or two, maybe. Um, and one night a man was asking William, you know, why is the sheriff keep going to your property? Why is he there so much? And William Poor William didn't realize Feeney was a sheriff. Oh, buddy. So William starts panicking. He's like, oh, my gosh. The sheriff is here questioning what I did. I need to fix this. So. What did he think up until that point? I don't know. Hey, this guy keeps coming over. This guy keeps asking. Maybe he thought it was another brother or something, you know. History calls them friends. (laughs) You know, maybe, maybe he can offer him a job again. Yeah, like, hey. I got some sheep that need herding. Yeah. You want to do that for me? But no. You know, um, so William went to Demler's body, which he did kill. He did kill Demler. He went to his body and dug it up. He's like, I got to get rid of this evidence, okay? But for some odd reason, that same night, Feeney decided, you know what? I'm going to take some men out and look for the evidence. So that night, they go to William's house and search for evidence. And they found these weird tracks in the mud, in this frozen mud. Like it's frozen. It's like oh, frozen and then trees. Yeah. Okay, I see. And so they follow it. And at the end of the track, they find a hole. Oh. oh, yes, a hole. A freshly oh. dug hole. Oh. You can tell it's freshly dug because the ground is, like, frozen, so it's hard to yeah. get up. I mean, and you can just tell when a hole has been dug. You can tell by the way it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And they found a bunch of hair. Person's hair. But I, could, I figured that much. <laughs> Person's hair. They find a bunch of hair. And they're like, what the heck? And so they go looking around again, and they find another trail, like a little wagon trail. They're like, let's follow this again. Do they find more hair? They do not find more hair, but they find William. Mm. And William's got this wagon. They're like, what are you doing here so early in the morning? William's like, oh, I got to start early, you know? Like, you know, the train. early bird, they done catching the worms. Exactly. And Feeney's like, no, let me search your wagon. And William's like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. And in it, they find a knife and an axe. But no body. It's what they were hoping for. They did not find the body. But Feeney will not give up. Have they questioned the sheep? They have not questioned the sheep. The sheep ate the body. They did not. Cool. They f- so they go out and they search. And 50 miles away, at the edge of, like, a little creek, they find pieces of Demler. Mm-hmm. Yes. They find his frozen body and that it has been hacked apart. That's fun. With an axe. Well, then what was the knife for? I don't know. The sister. The fingers. <laughs> no, he didn't cut him up that much. Oh. It was like oh. literal giant chunks, like an arm and a torso oh. and a head. Like, well, that's just lazy. It was big chunks of his body. William, I that's mean, lazy. he was frozen. That makes it easier. Does it really? Well, I would think so. Uh-huh. Because then it's not going to wiggle around. and Just it, snap it? Yeah. Okay. Frozen things are more brittle, so I would assume it would be easier mm, to cut a frozen body. Maybe. I assume. I assume. <laughs> I was just going to, like, um, okay. <laughs> I assume. She doesn't, she, does, she doesn't know for sure, guys. Don't I, worry about it. I, 
for legal reasons, <laughs> I have not killed anyone. So they find the majority of the body now that they found pieces of it. The majority? Well, they never found the whole body. Because he was cut up a bit. You know, there was a river. There was a little river moving everything. They find out that Demler was shot in the head with a pistol. And then again with a shotgun. A little bit of overkill, if you ask me. Yeah. But, you know, by the time the body was found, because they had to go 50 miles away Mm -hmm. to search, William had already talked to a lawyer. And he's like, bro, I killed someone. (laughs) He told his lawyer, I killed someone. You got to help me. And the lawyer's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Um, Lawyers, man. But the lawyer's like, you got to go to jail. And, you know, we got to figure this out, you know, as trials work out. So he was found and he went to jail. He was in jail, in prison for about a year, waiting for his trial to take pl- take place. Um, and during his, this time, during this short year, he tried to escape three different times. Okay. Okay. Three different times. Um, and, you know, like one time he was found with a saw. Where did he get that? Like, it wasn't a, a saw. It was a handmade saw. What in the Shawshank like, Redemption a, <laughs> is happening here? It had a pipe and, like, little wires. <laughs> it had, he had a pipe. With plastic knives taped to <laughs> yes, it. Yes, yes, and he sawed at things. He was punished for trying to escape and, like, having a, a saw, uh, the air quotes around like, saw. Hey, you don't can't, do that. You can't do this. My so God. he was punished. And during this punishment, he's like, no, I don't deserve this. So to rebel against the punishments, he went on a hunger strike for, like, six days. Who does he think he is? <laughs> He's William Kanecki, sheep farmer. My name is William Kanecki, sheep farmer extraordinaire. I think I'm from Germany. Yeah, Germany. I'm from Germany. This is my German accent. It's not a German I do not, accent. I do not deserve this. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I am not going to eat for the next three days. Six days. Six days. Um, But he also tried to kill himself by oh. eating a bar of soap. Well, that doesn't work, buddy. I'm like, sorry. I don't... Well... It was after his hunger strike. It's a little six days and then yeah. he tried to eat the soap. Well, he got so hungry, my guy. He got so, so hungry, he had to eat some soap. Well, I don't know yeah. much about old-timey soap, but I know that, like, actual, like, artisan bars of soap nowadays are made with lye, which is very toxic. Uh, maybe maybe he had a good idea. Maybe maybe he was actually kind of smart, but also... He stole 300 sheep. He, yeah. He's not that smart. He's not that smart. But um, maybe also it worked, but probably didn't, but also... He tr- you said tried, <laughs> so yeah, I don't he think didn't he was successful. Succeed. Yeah, um, so I- but he also picked fights with inmates just because he didn't want to go to court. <laughs> he didn't want to go. He didn't want to go to his trial, so he tried to like get murdered and whatnot. Me, but you know he eventually confessed that yes, I did kill Demler. But he said it was self defense. He said Demler came at me. I had nothing to do but shoot him twice. Well, with two different guns. Well, yeah, so you can assume that the first shot, if it is, if his self defense theory is right, you can assume that the first shot was with the shotgun, right? It was a it shotgun was a and pistol. a pistol. A pistol was first. Well, how do they know it was first? Because he was dead, and then he got shot by the shotgun. But this is eighteen, whatever. Yeah, their their mortuary science can't be that great. Okay, fine. So Let me hear it. in my theory. It, I'm not defending him, but this is what I think happened, okay? Demler, is that his name? Mm-hmm. Demler gets all upset because he finds out that What's-His-Face actually killed his brother. No, no, no. Demler is no brother. He, no? Rohrbecker is the brother. Demler is just some other farmhand that was working at the same time. Okay, Demler gets upset for some reason. <laughs> there we go. He gets upset at something because he maybe he finds out that my boy, my main man, William, here is not a good person. And he's like, hey, maybe you shouldn't do that. And he's like, gets really upset and it's all up in his face and he's yelling at him. Maybe they had an argument over wages or something. And then William's like, hey, man, shoot, bang, bang, with the shotgun to the chest. The head. Shotgun to the head. A pistol to the head and then shotgun. Also to the head? A head area. Okay, so... I just need to have everything planned out. Okay. So shotgun. Bam. Shotguns aren't very good at killing. Final blows. 
because they go everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. And so here's Demler writhing around like, oh, you shot me. I can't believe you shot me. And then he, William's just like, you know what? Let's not deal with that. Bang, bang. Put the dog down. Right in his head. Except all these other farmhands had gone missing. I mean, yeah, but... I mean, you could make a case. That was my theory. I'm not saying that but it was self-defense. It's he killed him. Oh, okay. 100%. I'm not defending the serial killer here. Okay. I, thought, I know that sounds exactly like <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I'm not. I'm stating that that is my theory as to what happened and how he ended up dead. Okay. But, um, so William confessed to murdering him, said it was self-defense. The judge was like, mm, no. Uh, life in prison. In September of 1919. Okay, we're in the 1900s now. Yes, we're not the 1800s, we're in the 1900s. We're in the modern era. Yes. <laughs> William escaped South Dakota's penitentiary. Of course he did. Yep. Was it with his homemade cell? Nope. Oh. Someone had the gates open because workers were coming and going, mm -hmm. and William just walked out. What an icon. He just walked out of the prison unnoticed. Act like you know what you're doing and no one questions you. He just walked out. That's what I do at work. And so the warden, like, eventually figured out if he was missing. So he's like, we gotta go find him. So he, like, calls all the agencies and he tries to go hunt him down. But he was gone. Mm -hmm. William had escaped. No one knows. Wait, that's why we can't dig him up? Exactly. Uh. He escaped. No one knows where he is. boy, William. <laughs> Someone said he went to Mexico, but there wasn't any evidence of that. And, you know, Regina, she's kind of on her own now. I was about to say, what happens to Regina? She's on her own. Her husband went to prison. She didn't disappear after he escaped. She was, she stayed. What an icon. But yeah, w William Kinecki is gone. Absolute He's legend. In the wind, no one knows what happened to him. Plot twist. He's your great great grandfather. Plot twist. <laughs> Plot twist. We are all William Kinecki. In one way or another. In one way or another, we are all William Kinecki. It's true. Okay. We're all a sheep farmer at heart. We are all a German sheep farmer at heart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Of Goths and Goblins. Please remember to rate and review us on iTunes. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Of Goths and Goblins, just like that, all one word. To, you can laugh at us there for being idiots. If you have an idea for the next show, please send us an email at www.ofgothsandgoblins at gmail.com. Just like that, all one word, no capitalizations. Thank you again, and... Just because a home is abandoned doesn't mean that it's empty.